This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the stereochemistry of substitution nucleophilic reactions. So we'll start by looking at the SN1 reaction. The SN1 mechanism involves the formation of a carbocation intermediate. Here we can see the mechanism of the two-step reaction. In the first step, the carbon to halogen bond breaks heterolytically, forming a carbocation intermediate. In the second step, the nucleophile, which in this example is the hydroxide ion, bonds with a carbocation intermediate to form a tertiary alcohol. The carbocation formed in step 1 is sp2 hybridized with a trigonal planar geometry. So here we can see the geometry of the carbocation intermediate. With three electron domains around the carbon atom, all of which are bonding domains, we get a trigonal planar geometry. Because of this trigonal planar geometry, the nucleophile can attack on either side of the carbocation intermediate. So here we can see that the nucleophile, which is abbreviated with NU, can attack on either side of this carbon atom in the carbocation intermediate. So in the reaction of a tertiary halogenoalkane with a chiral or asymmetric carbon atom, we can get two possible products which are known as enantiomers. Because the nucleophile can attack on either side of the carbocation, we get 50% of each enantiomer produced in the reaction. So the product can have the same stereochemical configuration as the reactant, which is known as retention of stereochemistry, or the opposite configuration, which is known as the inversion of the stereochemistry. So here we have the two products seen in the previous slide, the one on the left shows retention, the one on the right shows inversion. Because of the 50% of each product, this produces a racemic mixture with equal amounts of both enantiomer, which means that overall it's optically inactive. Next, we look at the SN2 reaction. The SN2 mechanism is stereospecific. This means that the backside attack by the nucleophile produces inversion of the configuration. So here we have the mechanism for an SN2 reaction. If we look at the starting reactant and the final product, we can see that there is an inversion of the configuration. The inversion of the configuration produces only one enantiomer, which means that the product is optically active. So let's end with a summary. The SN1 reaction produces a racemic mixture of the two enantiomers, which is optically inactive. This means it has no effect on the plane of plane polarized light. The SN2 reaction is stereospecific with inversion of the configuration. The product is optically active. Therefore, it will rotate the plane of plane polarized light.